said, we're in a new series that starts today. So if you just got here and this is your first experience at Squad, welcome. You picked a good time to come. Brand new series called Now You See Me. Okay, so if you're taking notes, you can write that down. I want to begin uh, by asking a quick question. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand. Just yell it out loud very quickly. How long does it take you to get ready before you leave the house? Awesome. I think I heard a full day on this side, a uh, minute 25 on this side. All right, so it sounds like some of you are built for speed to get ready. Others are built, built for quality. All right. So very good. I've really started something with that question. It's really good. Um, so I wanted to answer it this way. Here's what uh, answer I think you are probably discussing right now. It's this. The answer is it depends. Uh, the answer is it depends on how uh, long I'm going to get ready. It depends on where I'm going. Because chances are you're preparing when you get ready in the morning or whenever you're about to leave the house. When you're getting ready, you're getting ready with an audience in mind of where you're going. So, for example, if you're dating someone and they're going to be there, it may take you a little bit longer. You know, i got to do the thing with the thing and, and, and uh, you know, fellas, like, she likes the way you wear the hair that way or she likes that hat, wear it backwards. So you got you got to get the right fold and everything and all that kind of stuff. So so you kind of like that. So you got to take some time to make sure that the crease in the shoes doesn't show. You got to check the weather to see if it's going to be bad weather. You, you take some time depending on the audience. Now, if she's not going to be there, fellas, right, and you don't quite care who is there, well, you know, I just throw on some basketball shorts and a T-shirt, and I'm out, right? Did I brush my teeth, right? So you don't care as much whenever the audience that you're going to isn't that important necessarily to yourself. So I want to jump in this conversation and answer the question and say, me too. I get prepared based off of where I'm going and who's going to be there. And typically, I'll ask something along uh, the lines of these three questions when I'm getting ready, all right? So um, maybe this looks familiar to some of you guys. Um, this is my wife, so don't, don't judge me, fellas. I want my man card back. But this is my wife's. Ladies, you might know how one of these works, okay? Um, it's the oh, look version, and this is the oh, no version, right? So it, it magnifies on one side. But you, you spend some time in front of this thing getting ready, and typically when I get prepared to leave the house, I'll look and say, am I pleased with how I look, right? D do I like this? And then I'll go to my wife, Marissa, and say, hey, Marissa, do you like this? And to be honest, those are the only two opinions that matter. Hey, and hers counts higher than mine. But then maybe I'll say, now where I'm going, the audience there, will they like this? Or perhaps you might add a question. You'll even say, does a celebrity I admire, would they wear this, right? So something along those lines, but you do an assessment of what you're going to wear. And here's what t tonight's message is about as we kick off this series, is that I think you're putting too much weight on the opinions of people whose opinions don't really matter. Because the weight that you're putting and the emphasis you're putting on someone over the next three, four, five years, maybe even the next month, may not even be a character in your life, right? But you're putting so much emphasis on what they think. So I just want to take a pause in you getting ready, and I actually want to look at one verse. That's right, you heard me. Just one verse for tonight. Just that Some of y'all just got excited right there. Like, oh, snap. God answered my prayer. This prayer thing works. One verse, and I want you to write this down, remember it, whatever you have to do, but I'd love for you to somehow put it on a post-it note and put it on your mirror when you're getting ready so that you can remember this one verse, okay? So if you're ready, you can write this down, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is your getting ready verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Here's what Paul wrote. He said, for we are God's handiwork, and some translations actually say that that word is masterpiece, Hey, did you know that about you? You are a piece of work, but in a good way, okay? You're a piece of work in a good way. So you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So here's what stands out to me about that verse. First, I can't get over this, I'm a masterpiece. Can you say that real quick? Just say it out loud. Say, I'm a masterpiece, 
No, no, not you, me, me. I'm just kidding. No, no. So that's the whole point of this series, okay? That you are a masterpiece. You're a piece of artwork. You were designed by God. And not only were you designed, but it goes on to say that because of what Jesus did, there's something for you to do. So you're a masterpiece and you have a job to do. And God prepared that job because of who you would be. So here's what you need to walk away from tonight with. God made me for a job to do for him. And you have a purpose that he has prepared in advance because he knew you were coming. So you were called into the world. Now, many of you maybe know, uh, maybe you haven't read it, but you've heard it enough. That like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He called them into existence. That happened for you. God took some genetics from your father, some genetics from your mother, and put them together and said, I want them to be like this. And the people that they will interact with and get to know are the only ones they could have an impact because of who they are in that group of people. So you are a masterpiece with a job to do. So I want to talk a little bit about that job to do and you being a masterpiece. So there are three things, three uh, views that you'll struggle with for a, I don't want to say majority of your life, but that you'll struggle with time to time in your life. Okay, one is, you'll wonder this throughout your life. How do they see me? Meaning, how do other people see me? And then the other one is, how do I see myself? And the third one is, how do I think God sees me? Those are the three things that you'll, you'll struggle with often, and whichever you put the more priority on is how you'll make your decisions. So especially that first one, how do I think people see me? Because you don't really know. You just assume, and sometimes that gets us in trouble because you think they have a certain view of you, and then that spurs you on to make certain decisions. So I want to hang out with that one for a little bit of how you think someone looks at you. So here's what happens is that now when you're getting ready, because of who you think is going to be there and what they think of you, you start looking in the mirror like, okay, I got I to gotta take care of this. All right. Oh, I got to fix that. I got to make sure because, you know, uh, I don't have a mustache. Like he has a mustache and she likes mustaches. So I really got to, you know, let me, where's mom's pencil, right? So don't do that, guys. You don't have to do all that, right? So the, the, the ladies, it's a little different. It's like, oh man, okay. So, so he likes, he, he mentioned that he liked eyebrows and I don't have eyebrows. Thanks, mom. I don't have eyebrows. So where's mom's pencil, right? It, it, it does it all but we spend so much time focused right here on what we look like and we start seeing all these flaws in us. And then you flip the mirror over and it zooms in. You're right, ladies, you know how this thing works. And you cut the light on, right? All of a sudden you're seeing like all the, all the flaws that you have and all the issues and oh my gosh, I didn't know there was gunk in there. How do I get that out? Right, you're seeing all these things really up close, but you study it so long then you really start to focus in on it like, oh my gosh, I really am messed up. They said these things. I heard these things about me. I don't have as many likes on my picture like she does on her picture. I don't have as many followers as he does. And you start zooming in on all these flaws that you have and you think you know how they see you. And you really start focusing heavy on those flaws. But I said you're a masterpiece, right? Right? That, that's what God's word says, that you're a masterpiece. So I want to do another illustration because here's something that I want to draw a line in the sand and tonight say, stop doing this, okay? So it's one thing to have that view about yourself. We want you to stop that and see yourself the way God sees you because there's a difference in how you see yourself compared to how God sees you because we just talked about it. Maybe you didn't know you were a masterpiece. You go home and whenever you get in the car and your parents say, hey, would you learn at squad? They say, I'm a masterpiece. Do it just like that, and they may not let you come back. I don't know, but you know, you'll, you'll leave the last squad that you ever come to with that correct message. But here's the thing. If you're a masterpiece and God created all people, then that means we're all a masterpiece. So I want to show you a masterpiece. Now, this painting I'm about to reveal to you is 37 years old. It was painted by my mom before my brother was born, and he's a little older than I am. So she painted this. It's been our house for a long time, or her house. And I was like, hey, mom, can I borrow that? Can I borrow that? Can I have it? Can you let me you know, hold on to it? 
and I love this painting. I don't know if you'll love it. I don't quite care if you love it. That's not what we're here for. But I like this painting, okay? Uh, so, so, so here is um, my mom's masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. By Kay Carter, Rembrandt. I'm just kidding, okay. I hear $500, well, I hear $600, $600. I'm just kidding, no, just kidding. That's not, that's not what we're here. $2, right? Artists are always appreciated later. But this masterpiece, it's a masterpiece to the artist, right, for sure. Now, to you, it may not be. To you, you may just see some Disney characters, and you're like, oh, it's, it's whatever. But to the artist, this is valuable. To you, it, it doesn't matter to you. It's just wood and, and some, some paper. And some, you don't care. It's some paint. But to the artist, it's different. But here's what happens. We typically get on our social media accounts, and we start going and looking at someone else's social media account, and we start focusing in on their flaws. And we want to zoom in and study them and say, um, you're trying to look some type of way, but really, bro, you need to know some things about yourself, right? And we put it on their Instagram. We take some screenshots, and we alter the photo, and we send it to a friend to make fun of this person, right? And we say, bro, uh, your teeth kind of big. And then you, and you say, um, man, I knew you were smart, but you nose a lot because your nose is a lot. That's a big nose. You're the first to know when the pizza's on the way. And we focus in on those things and start calling them out. Bro, your, your, your ears are just too big. You goofy looking. Hey, that's why they give me the microphone. Hey, you know. But we do that, or it's been done to you. And here's the thing that you need to understand. That when you didn't create it, you don't get a say. You may sit in your seat right now from where you're looking and say, um, Josh, why goofy light skin? He's definitely black, right? Right? I've seen the movies, I've seen the shows, why is he like brown up there? I want to introduce you to a phrase that I'm going to just use, and I kind of made it up, so use it how you will. There's a thing called artist privilege. When you're the artist, you get to decide. So when you're not the artist, I don't need to be up here analyzing each and every thing and calling out each and every flaw, because guess what? I got some too but I'm still a masterpiece. So who am I to call out someone else as masterpiece? So you need to be careful about how you use social media and how you take screenshots and use them to do whatever you want to to make fun of whoever you want to because they're a masterpiece. And when you're not the artist, you don't get a say. So criticizing people for how they look and how they appear needs to stop and let me give you some good news to those who maybe you have like a self-image that's not where you want it to be and you've put too much value and weight in what other people think of your image then now your value is deplenishing because of what you think of yourself let me help you out real quick especially you're all teenagers right I wouldn't say raise your hand because that's everybody right except for the, the volunteers who are here you're all teenagers so here's some good news for you the looks that you're worried about are going to change. They change. Your looks continue to change. That's a whole part of like growing up, like maturing and growth. So that thing that you're worried about is not going to look the same in a couple months, in a couple years, right? And then when you're 30, that good news I just gave you is going to become bad news. Amen to all the volunteers in the room, right? I was like, yeah, because you change and, and it doesn't stop. And then all of a sudden you're like, just slow down, God, please, right? But through each and every stage of your life, here's what you need to remember. You are still a masterpiece. My mom chose these colors because it was her work of art. So she got the artist privilege to decide what color the nose would be, the eyes would be, what color the shirt would be, the vest would be. She got to choose because it's her masterpiece. 
to when God decided that he needed an Ashley in the world, a Brittany in the world, a Jeff in the world, an Ethan in the world, a Silas in the world, a Levi in the world. He decided, I'm making another masterpiece, and here's what I want him or her to do. And the moment that you start focusing too much on me, 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 and not God, you start to forget that you're a masterpiece. And you walk away from the one source and the one opinion that really matters. So what I would love for you to do whenever you're getting ready from now on is to say, okay, am I pleased with this? That, that's, a, that's an okay question. But then is God pleased with this? And not just how you look, because I'm about to change that here in a second, but is God pleased with what I'm doing? Because I would love it if we could take the magnifying glass and stop looking superficially on the exterior and what our looks are because they're changing, but who you are, your personality, your character, your integrity, those things. Because let me tell you something real quick, and our small group leaders can back me up on this. You may think of someone that you've been picked on or you have picked on or they've been labeled goofy looking or whatever the case may be. It's the goofy ones that become the good looking ones with a bank account. So you better be, okay, just saying, that's, that's not in the Bible, but that's truth. But let me tell you this, and you probably already know this. I've dated some cute girls that turned ugly because I got to know them. And I was like, oh, no, we, no, 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 no. I got to, I got to, you know, woo, I, I'm at, you're right. But then I found the total package. There you go, right? So you've got to realize that when you're doing this and you're not doing the internal check like this and checking your heart, some things are going to be off. You're putting too much emphasis on your image. And you're allowing other people to too, put too much opinion on your image and your value. And they're not the artist. And you're still the masterpiece. So my last example that I want to give to you is that it said that because of what Jesus did for us, we're now called to do something. And God has prepared in advance something for you to do. So while we're stuck looking at other people or looking at ourselves, God has some binoculars. He's like, um, I'm trying to let you know what's coming and get you prepared for that. Why are you looking at yourself? Why are you so focused on you? It's not about you. For example, let's get real practical. Um, you have a Spanish test next week. See, si, por favor, right? You need to get ready for that. I'm trying to let you know that you need to. Say, why are you looking at that's not going to help you on the test? There's this girl coming, dude, and you are her type if you would get to know me a little bit more because she wants someone who's going to help her with her relationship with me, por favor. So you need to get some things right, but we're still focused too much on us. And God's saying, I have something prepared for you, and I see it coming, and you're too worried about right now and this image thing, but it's your personality that needs to work. You, you can put the mirror down because that's not going to help you see who you are. So the example I want to leave you with is that what if, and I know this sounds kind of cliche, but that's what us youth pastors and dads do, but what if you decided tonight that I'm not going to let just anyone have say over the value of my life. I'm not going to listen to every opinion about me because guess what? You're not the artist. And I'm still the masterpiece. And God can fix me because I'm trying to work on my relationship with him. So I can change. But if you're not in a relationship with God, you're still going to be ugly. You know what I'm saying? Like he's <laughs> on the inside, okay? On the, on the inside, you're still going to be ugly. And then maybe the devil will take care of the outside. Too. I don't know, but, but on the inside. But what if you took that same magnifying glass, and I'm going to sit down, J.D., sorry I didn't tell you and warn you, but here we go. What if you just took some time to put some emphasis where it belongs, and you decided that, hey, um, I do struggle with this whole image thing. 
and and I do post a lot of pictures because of what people say about me, and I'm trying to get more opinions about me. So because she said this about me, I'm going to post these pictures, and I'm going to take more off and show more so that I can get more likes because then that's going to add value to my life. If, if I can just, like, send these videos out because I know what, what he likes and what he said and what he wanted and, and all these kind of things, and we didn't get the opportunity, but I, I really want companionship. So if I have to do this, I'll do it. And you start looking at all these other opinions that aren't going to have eternal weight and all those people that made you feel low and like dirt, let me give you a quick look into your future. Those are going to be the people that are delivering your Amazon packages in five to ten years. And that's not to make fun of the, that value and that job, but I'm saying you're putting so much weight into someone in five to ten years, they're not going to matter to your every day. So why are you stuck in front of the mirror because of what someone else said about you or thinks about you that you don't even know if it's true that they said it? But when I can take that same magnifying glass and apply it to God's word and I can see that the creator of my life that brought me into this world and what he said about me, now I can add some value to that and I can carry that with me. So when I get up in the morning and I read that I'm his handiwork, I'm his masterpiece, there's nothing you can tell me so that way, girls, let me fast forward to our Ride the Ship series real quick. If a guy tries to come at you with anything less than masterpiece, you better say, fall back, because my Heavenly Father already called me what I am. You better come with something more than that. Don't talk about how I'm bougie. I'm more than just bougie, right? I'm more than that ratchet. I, I, am, more, I am not ratchet. You, I'm a master. Pete, call it, call it what it is. But stop focusing so much on the opinions of people that aren't going to matter. Work on you and your relationship with God so that when you get ready, right, when, when you're getting ready and, and you're trying to go out before you leave the house, or maybe even when you get home, it would be great to sandwich it at the beginning of your day and at the end of the day. Just ask this out loud. Say, God, are you pleased with me? God, I'm, I'm, I know I'm your masterpiece, but you said I, I'm supposed to be doing something. Did I do it today? And that's essentially what I ask myself whenever I preach. Like, I'll get home tonight, and, and I'll evaluate how this went, and then I go and watch it back as I'm editing it for YouTube. And I'll wonder, and Marissa say, hey, you did good, honey, because that's what is kind of in her job description. She's going to say that. And it, I, I could say just cats are terrible and walk off the stage. Just, hey, that was good, though. You spoke truth. You spoke, you're right. I'm just kidding. But I'm going to evaluate myself, and I'll say sometimes I missed it. I, I miss it. There's something I could have done. God, are you pleased with how I prepared for this message? And if the answer is, and I feel no, now I've got to go back to the lab. So the beginning of the day and the end of the day, just ask, God, are you pleased with me? And it's not that you have to feel like you're not worthy because of the song we just sang. Yours masterpiece. He cares about you. And here's what you need to know. The moment you try to bring down, criticize, talk trash to, or talk trash about one of his other masterpieces, he is not pleased with you. Check your timeline. Check your text messages. Check your group. And maybe there's some conversations you need to bow out of because God's not pleased with that. You're talking about his masterpiece. You're not the only one. He died for us all. So, I'm going to close with this. What if we treated each other like a masterpiece? Just how would your conversations look different? How much more positive would you feel? And what a world of a difference you could make in the life of someone who just feels like they don't matter. If you treated them like a priceless piece of art instead of just a piece of work. Because it's different. This painting means more to me than it does you. This painting means more to my mom than it does me. And that's how it is with God. You matter. I don't know, maybe you needed to hear that today because people around you have said something different, but you matter.
to put value and take the opinion of the one that it counts from, and that's God. So when you get home tonight, God, are you pleased with me? Because I want to be your handiwork, and I want to treat others like your handiwork. So with all of that, the next question is kind of, kind of this. Well, Josh, if I'm his handiwork, and, and he has a purpose for me, then how did I become the person he wanted? And what am I supposed to do? That's a great question that we'll talk about next Wednesday. Don't miss it. Let me pray for us. If you would bow your head and close your eyes.